Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 11th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for clim another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk to you a little bit about an update for Arctic Ocean and, and Arctic environment temperature trends for the above 70 degree north latitude zone. But before I get into that, I, I'd like to provide just a bit of content, good, a bit of context about Arctic warming over time. Now, this graph is, is a Pettit climate graph. I recommend that you check it out. It's by Jim Pettit, and he has a site, uh, Pettit Climate Graphs. Dot com, and he has a number of, of climate graphs, but the one I'm going to look at right now with you is describing sea ice volume measures as recorded by biomass since 1979. And what biomass has found by monitoring sea ice is that the total volume of sea ice at the end of melt season has been reduced from about 16,855 cubic kilometers to less, well, to, to a range of between four and 6,800 6, cubic kilometers in the present day. And so, the sea ice volume has been reduced by approximately two thirds over this time period. So, so when you think about ice, you people often think about what area of the Arctic Ocean is covered as you're looking at it from above. But what volume measure is not only the coverage, but also the thickness. And, and so when you add coverage plus thickness, you end up getting volume. And what we find is that, that that sea ice has been more than decimated many times over due to the ongoing warming trend. And it's, it's a pretty good indicator of how much the Arctic has warmed. Now, one thing that, that we often don't talk about quite as much and that is being tracked very astutely by a, an Arctic observer by the name of Zach Labe, and I recommend that you follow him on Twitter, is, is the overall temperature rank by month for the Arctic above the 70 degree north latitude zone. And this is since 1979, so it's a, it's a 1979 to 2018 measure. And Zach ups, updates this every month as the new information comes in from NOAA's ERE Earth Systems Research Lab monitor. And it's a satellite-based uh, system. And what has happened is that the Arctic Ocean during June, the most recent month of 2018, was just experienced the fifth hottest June on record. And, and Zach has done us the, the benefit of color coding the monthly temperature measures from blue equaling coolest to, to dark red, brick red equaling hot, warmest. And, and as you can see with the shift from blue to red, the temperature trend for each month, January through December, during the recent years has, has been considerably warmer. Now, occasionally you'll get a, an outlier month from the warming trend, and if you go back, you'll get some outlier months from the, the cooler trends earlier in the 1970s, but the overall trend is, is one of severe Arctic warming. And, and for this year, we have so far experienced uh, second warmest January on record, second warmest February on record, the 26th warmest March on record, which was a bit of a, a cool outlier for the 70 degree north and further latitude zone. 
the fifth warmest April on record, the ninth warmest May, and the fifth warmest June. So the, the warming trend, of course, is, is still visible. Now, it's worth noting that El Nino years for the Arctic tend to be warm as, as, as the Earth system warms up. And, and recently, we've had a lot of teleconnection between the tropics and, and the Arctic. And this was very visible during, during the 2015-2016 El Nino. As the El Nino tapered off, there was a lot of heat transfer into the Arctic during 2016. And, and this has kind of pumped up Arctic heat throughout recent years. So just a basic analysis of climate trends and temperature trends for the Arctic and, and a very visible example of the warming that is going on there. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy blog. I look forward to chatting with you again soon.